All right, well, I finally got my uh, chart plotter for plotting the um, discharge curves on these uh, little cells that I'm making here. And the guys that are doing this uh, with the large batteries, this is kind of a different scenario because I, I wanted to see what would happen on just these little tiny, uh, tiny cells that I'm making here that are strictly lead and then the alum. And uh, I'm starting to make them with red lead. And this is this red lead, uh, John, that um, the lithridge, they call it. And I'm making the plates with holes in them and putting that stuff in there and then making three plate cells that are sandwiched together, two negatives and a positive in the middle, which is what that is. And you can see the long, slow discharge curve on about a volt and a half cell. This is where I disconnected it for just a second. You can see how the... the uh, the computer immediately picked up on that. But I also ran a discharge curve on just a supercapacitor, a 10 farad super cap uh, with about a volt and a half in it. And the curve on that went linearly down like this. And you can see how this cell here is taking a much more level course. So I just wanted to um, share with the guys that I am doing some of these discharge testings but I'm doing them on these little cells. I have the big battery I can do it on with the bigger loads, uh, the battery conversion, the, the motorcycle battery, but I wanted to see what would happen um, with these things that I'm making from scratch and just see what would happen. But this cell right here that I made, like I say, with the holes in the middle of the positive plate and the outside plates um, is, is so much stronger than something like that is that's just solid and it's just all wrapped up in a sandwich and it's been running this for oh I don't know half an hour and you can see how long and slow that discharge curve is very impressive real interesting stuff to study thanks for watching